Well hey, it's time for another Dreamcast video. Today, we're going to be looking at two fairly annoying problems that have very two simple solutions. Today's video is a little bit about preventative maintenance and also just general upkeep, but there are two things I've been wanting to do for a while now, so let's jump straight in. The first issue pertains to the controller ports. These are all connected to a fuse and apparently, I haven't tested this myself, but if you pull the controller out while the console is on, apparently this can blow the fuse. Unfortunately, this is not the sort of fuse that can easily be swapped out as it is soldered into place. So today, as a part of preventative maintenance, we'll be swapping out that fuse with one that automatically resets. The second part of this video is about the internal timing clock. Conventionally, devices like this will have their time tracked by a small cell battery. While this is kind of the case here, the Dreamcast actually uses a rechargeable battery, which is also soldered into place. I'm sure all Dreamcast users are probably used to seeing the time set screen, so today we'll be installing a modern rechargeable battery that will hopefully allow the Dreamcast to know what year it's in for a few years to come. Here's the battery and the battery holder. Because it's a holder, if this battery dies in the future, which it most definitely will, we can simply swap out a new battery without having to do any soldering. Now I bought these together as a kit from a local online retro gaming store, and it comes with a 3.6 volt battery. Reading a Dreamcast wiki on the subject, it actually recommends a 3 volt battery, as apparently that's the voltage that the Dreamcast recharges at. At this point, I'm not really sure if I should bother changing out the battery, so we'll see how it goes. Just want to point out now that it needs to be a rechargeable lithium battery. Do not put an alkaline battery in. It's not designed for this purpose and could end very badly. And here is the fuse, or fuses in my case. I only need one, but I could only buy it as a pack of 20, so I guess I have 19 spares. For those playing at home and want to do this yourself, this is called a poly switch. This one is rated to 72 volts, 400 milliamps, and is a resettable fuse. I did not come up with those numbers myself, but all the guides I found online seem to be recommending those specs, so that's what we'll be going with today. Let's get started. Disassembly of the Dreamcast is incredibly simple. First, you'll need to remove the 56K modem, which simply slides out, and then all that's holding the two halves of the case together are four Philip head screws. Doesn't get much simpler than that. Once those four screws are removed, turn the console back over, and it's a bit easier if you open the lid to aid in pulling the top half of the case off. And the culprits are immediately apparent. To the right we have the fuse that will be replaced, on this circuit board it's labelled as F1, and to the left we have the battery, pretty obvious. First, remove two connectors, a ribbon cable at the top, and a small little connector on the right. These aren't latched in or anything, they should simply pull right out. After that, remove another four screws, and with that you can pull the controller port module out and work on it by itself. And now we have a better view of the components we will be replacing. In preparation for desoldering, I like to add a bit of flux, and then reflow the solder pads with fresh solder. And then I used my ever fateful cheap Chinese desoldering pump to remove what needs to be removed. Although this thing is getting a bit on now and is starting to make quite the mess. One of these days I'll stump up the funds for one of the big name versions, but for today this is the tool I have at my disposal. And as you can see it got quite messy, particularly around the battery, so I used a bit of braid to clean things up. At this point the old fuse came out with little fight, although it did partially disintegrate on removal. Although the battery was a bit trickier, since the solder legs have been bent over. I tried a few tools to bend these straight, but it's actually my fingernails that actually ended up doing the job. And with that, both components are removed. Let's measure the battery for kicks. Yep, that is a doorknob, but we already knew that. So, after a bit more cleanup with braid and IPA, it was time to put in the new components. And it really does not get any simpler than this. This is one of the most straightforward repairs I've done in a while. The new components simply go in where the old components were, and then I soldered them into place. Easy. Looking pretty good. But did you know this controller module is absolutely useless when it's not connected to the rest of the Dreamcast? Gosh! Let's put it back in. Reassembly is the exact reverse of disassembly, so I won't bother showing it all here. But once everything is said and done, don't forget to insert the battery. Just make sure the polarity is the right way. 
So after mostly putting it back together, we can turn it back on and find that the controller port does indeed still work. Great, we didn't break anything. Now, let's set the time. 2021 must seem like quite the future to the Dreamcast. It thought it was 1998 every boot for the last 10 years I've owned it. Poor thing. I left it on for about half an hour while eating dinner, just to make sure that the battery was fully charged, and then I unplugged everything, left it for about 10 minutes, and plugged it back in to find that it was still retaining the time. Great, this repair has been a success. And I bloody well hope so, considering how simple it was. Regardless, I'm glad I've done it. Preventative maintenance is something that's always worth doing, and seeing that clock set screen every time was getting kind of annoying. But that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.